G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. We are here casting the Master of Realms and boy oh boy do I have some... Oh, what's the easiest way to say this? I have some controversial stuff to talk about today. Ladies and gentlemen, let's introduce our players and then we'll get into the good stuff. Spawning in on the northwest side of the island. Playing in the color blue as the Aeobids. Representing Team My Insanity, it's Zertan. And... Yeah, there it is. <laughs> there it is. And on the southeast side of the island, in the color red blang is the Marlians. It's Baltoon. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Sakutra. If you've played Age of Empires 2 before, you'd be very familiar with this map. If you've played Age of Empires 4 only and never touched Age of Empires 2, you're going to have no idea what the hell this map is. And to be honest with you, I've got no idea either. Let me... Let me give you like my perspective on the lore of this map and why this map is currently being played right now because this is a tournament game right like we have got money on the line for these players right now as they play this and you might be wondering drongo why what wh why though like there's no fish in the water just put them in the thunder dome throw them in the thunder dome throw them in mountain clearing like we did last time and just call it a day why are they even here that's a good question so as you guys know Red Bull Walla Lol is happening later on this year. And one of the maps that they included in the Age of Empires 4 map pool was Sakutra. <laughs> and the best thing about that was that at that point, there was no map called Sakutra, even on the mods for Age of Empires 4. Like, it just didn't exist. So, <laughs> I, I guess what I'm trying to say is it was very clear from the map pick that the person who had been in charge of choosing the maps didn't really have much familiarity with Age of Empires 4. They also picked, I think, Kawasan, which is a very popular Age of Empires 2 map. Not so much for Age of Empires 4, uh, but essentially that's why we're here now. So I suspect it's probably going to come a little bit more into the rotation, uh, just simply because we've uh, we've got it on the horizon for Red Bull Walla Lowen. You know, what better way to, to finish off your day when it gets to map number 7 in the best of 7 warm-up match for the Age of Empires 2 Grand Final between the Age of Empires 4 players than to see Sukutra picked up and uh, and Beastie Cutie just rage quit as a Marine Lord. I don't, I don't know. Like, what, what What's the cheesiest thing you can do on this map? Like, maybe some sort of drop? Like, I, I don't know. An attack on... An attack on the water? Maybe. It's it's a water map. Is that even cheese? Like, yeah, it's, there's water here, but we're expecting that. Anyway, you guys get the picture. For some reason... Someone somewhere made the decision that this was a map that we'll play in, an, in, a, in a big prize money tournament. And now we're here. And <laughs> that, that's it. That's my story. My question is, what do you think of this map? If we, if we were to analyze this map and say, okay, all right. Do we have a good map here? Do we have a bad map here? What have we got going on here? Well, first and foremost, we've got the Aebids. We've got the Marlians. We've got two interesting Civ picks. Uh, but let's talk a bit about the map. So first and foremost, two sacred sites. Okay. I don't mind it. I think I think it's cool. They're kind of in reach of the uh, the water as well, so you can use the water to defend the sacred sites. Kind of cool. Boar in the middle, single boar. So Rus not going to be good here. A little bit of uh, stacking up or double stacking up of the deer as well. One thing to note. Uh, but overall, not a huge amount of deer. Not uh, when it comes to berries. It looks like we've got three packs of berries for each player. I want to say. No, we've actually got a fourth random pack down here as well. So it looks like there's three main, and then you've got like a, a random one. Anyway, age ups come through. It's going to be the Mansa Quarry for Balturn. On the north side, we did see the military wing going to be coming through, and of course, it's going to be the reinforcement arm of that wing for the Aeobids. Expect to see the eco wing uh, coming through a little bit later on in the Castle Age. That's typically the strategy that you're going to be seeing from the Aeobids. It's going to be that sort of focus on the Castle Age. It doesn't always have to be a fast castle, but it is most common that we see that, especially paired up here with the military wing. So nice and early age up here for him as well. Meanwhile, I want to ride on board with Baltoon. I want to see exactly what the play is for him, as it is going to be a dock that's thrown down here. Now, I wonder if he knows that there's no fishing boats. Well, I mean, technically you can make fishing boats, but there's no fish out here. Like, can you imagine if the man just makes a single fishing boat and, and starts looking and he's like, oh, okay, well, that didn't work. But I guess, to be honest, like, I would expect most players to have familiarity with this map, even though this map is, like, it's a bit of a laugh, a bit of a gif, a bit of a gaff. Uh, it is, it's not really, yeah, anyway, uh, I'll, I'll move on. Other, other things that we can analyze about this map, relatively small tree line, not huge tree lines, uh, pretty big ones in the middle, so that's definitely going to be a point of contention. 
and gold veins. There's no big gold veins. It's all just small gold veins, which I'm a big fan of. I do actually like that. So, realistically, this map, all it does is it basically just takes the playing field, the playing board, makes it a lot smaller, reduces the amount of resources that you've got on it, and says fight. That's pretty much it. It also just kind of jazzes it up with the idea of having hunting canoes out, I guess. You can see that we do have the rally point all already coming through. Now, this has this been scouted out by Zerton already? Is is that how he knows? I mean, we, we don't know if he knows, but we can suspect that he knows. And can, can I just remark? I mean, I do a lot of complaining. Do I really want to remark on this? I'll remark on it. It's been how many years? And I still can't see whether he knows about this dock. Like, I know he's been here, but just because of the way the line of sight works, like, I've, I've got no idea whether he knows about this dock. I would assume he probably does, considering there's an outpost in between these two resources, and there is a hunting canoe on the way. I would assume that he does, but I don't know. And otherwise, I just have to kind of speculate. And it's not fun. I don't like that. Uh, anyway. Barracks now going to be coming up as well for Baltoon here. Hunting canoe coming through. This is going to be your, uh, your arrow ship. We do see that he's going to be looking to pick up arrow slits as well on the defense here, Zerton. Baltoon coming through on that top side. Horticulture also going to be coming in. So could be looking at moving into cows. That's something very common that we see players do. Because the horticulture upgrade does affect them. And uh, good to see that Baltoon just out here. You know, just keeping an eye out on um, on the shoreline. Making sure that there's... Uh, ooh. Has he found a little spot right here? Has he found the angle? 6.5 tiles of range. You better believe he's found the angle. Oh, that's actually very, very annoying. But it looks like... I think you could probably throw... Ooh, I don't... You can't get a lumber... Or a mining camp in between those two. Has he got enough resources for the age up? I think he might have it. Let's have a look and see. I've just... I just realized right then. Did they fix the Ayubid... When did they fix the Ayubid age up? Why can I see the Ayubid age up? That, that used to be, like, top secret hidden... Hidden from everybody. No one knew when the Ayubid age up was coming through. Oh, wait. Maybe maybe they didn't fix it. Maybe I was just physically looking and clicking on it. You never know. You never know where these drongos. Is he, he... I thought he was holding... Or, like... Holding... Uh, or, what's the word? Pushing fire. Uh, I, I'm, I'm losing my mind. I'm sorry. Uh, th this, is a, this is a bit awkward. Does he have to drop a market here? I'm feeling like he might need to drop a market just to buy the gold to get up. He can obviously go to this gold as well. But this is actually a pretty nice move. I didn't actually think there would be much that could be done. You can see he's at 588 right now. He needs 600. So a real real delay is coming through because Zerton should have clicked up a minute ago. We can see these Vils now going to be moving out towards... Where's he going? It looks like he is just going to be coming around to the top side. Never never got that gate down. And now towards the main base. It looks like Baltoon going to be playing it out in the Feudal Age. So looking to stay a little bit longer here. Trying his, uh, trying his best to keep his opponent down in the Feudal Age as well. But obviously not going to be happening. As that gold does eventually get gathered up. You can see he's got a pretty nice angle right there for it as well. But I tell you what, that that right there, that's quite nice. I don't mind that at all. When it comes to like options for gold as well, you're kind of limited when it when it is like when you're talking about this map. Gold is on the edge. And I think that's definitely by design. One thing to note though, stone wasn't on the edge for uh, for Baltoon, but it was on the edge here for Zerton. So that could have been pretty impactful as well. Age up is through. And okay, I was right. They didn't fix it. I just, I thought they had. Never mind. Uh, so economic wing growth. No real surprise here. Has left enough on each of these berry bushes here to make sure that they do get that bonus coming across as well. Looks like he might have eaten one. Either, yeah, he did eat one. There was one here, I remember, when he put the mill down. And there's the double racks coming in. More units moving towards that north side of the map. Would it be weird if I told you guys I feel like Baltoon didn't make enough boats on a map? that I wouldn't expect there to be any boats made on. Like, this is kind of wild, right? But could you imagine if he brought in a second military vessel out here? Like, what if he got the uh, the hunting canoe out here again? Like, a second one as the follow-up. Shuts down both of these two golds on the back. Where do you even go then? A Zerton. Like, you can shut down gold very, very easily just by rushing those hunting canoes. Now, granted, from the side of Zerton... I think he's learned his lesson here, and he's going to say, okay, you know what? Next game I play on this stupid map, I'm going to put an outpost here and an outpost here. I'll put two outposts down to guard this goal. And I think that's probably a wise move. But I tell you what, that's definitely quite a bit of an investment early on. Javelin's throwing out at the Desert Raider. Age up about to come through here. We can see he's about, what, 20 seconds away? 29 seconds away. Not too long to go. 
Double rack. So expect to see Gulams coming out. Nice little quick wall coming through as well. But only the two Raxes, though. Ideally, you'd want a couple more, though, just because you're going to have plenty of production. One thing that you've got to always be really careful of is after you've aged up, and I always find this happens, my enemy pushes me. Whenever I'm playing the AU bits, I go Castle Age, and I get pushed immediately. This is something you've got to be very, very careful of. So I I'm fearful that it's going to happen to Zertan right now. So the age up comes through, and now that there's more villagers out, that means there's more villagers to kill. So this is like the perfect time right now for Baltoon. If he wants to start pushing, just go for it. And we can see Siege Engineering is coming through. So it looks like that is going to be the case. Mangonel is going to get made right here by... Or rather, Manjanik is going to get made here by the magic of the Camel Rider. Camel Rider? The Desert Rider. Apologies. And a uh, little bit of a re-wall over towards that east side. Baltoon putting the squeeze on Zertan right now. Holding on for dear life. Look at the line of sight he's got in here on the back of the base. And those about the market as well. So there is going to be some trading. Meanwhile, towards the top. More pressure being put on. And have a look at this. Ram number one coming down. A lot of villagers. Or rather, a lot of units working towards it. Also start to see Musafadi coming out. Beautiful timing on the Musafadi. Will now reveal those as well. Accidentally to Zertan. So he's going to know about the presence of the Musafadi here, which is really well timed for the Gulams, because that's kind of what you expect him to go into, and that's exactly what we see. So now by going into those Gulams, means the Musafadi are going to have a pretty decent counter. They'll be doing 18 damage for each swing of their attack. Uh, but yeah, I kind of expected Baltoon to strike maybe a minute or two earlier than what he did, but I guess he's somewhat slowed down by the fact that he had to go for the hunting canoe early on here. Manjanik looking to push back the, the vessel... I don't know, what, what's the correct term? The canoe? The ship? The boat? I guess. I guess either or. All of these are acceptable. They pull out their swords. Get taken out. The javelin. Just taking them out very, very quickly. A lot of javelins here as well. What kind of makeup are we looking at? 14 javelins on the map. 16 javelins on the map. And look at this. You can you can feel right now Zertan is so squished into his base. And this is just it. I mean, this is, this is how... What, what, like, this is part of the reason why maps like this are very very frustrating to play on for players because you have no space in the base right like it all, all, all of a sudden becomes really important microing every little building and making sure you're using up every pixel and getting all of those little spots nice and perfect but the manjanik now going to be forced back away from the front line a lot of melee units in here some leaves getting thrown up in the air have a look at that that bad boy manjanik another shot comes in underneath the town center we see two worker kills so far it looks like he might be taking out the workers that are on gold. And you can see he's going to look to focus them down now. Finding that village account and bringing it down. 21 idols. Dodging the mango shot. It comes through. We ride on board now with Baltoon as he looks to continue reinforcing across the center of the map. He's got plenty of units here. One thing to note is that Zertan is still somewhat holding on. The town center has done a pretty decent job in covering here. Only got that one battering ram. So hasn't lost a huge amount. And to be honest, that's a pretty good hold here from Zertan. I'd be very happy if I was him with how this hold went. Um, I guess, realistically, there wasn't too much to improve on other than just, like, getting very frustrated with the, the lack of space in your base. But it obviously worked very well for him here because it meant that Baltoon didn't have many avenues of attack, a lot of melee units, but not really anywhere for them to go. So pretty well played here. They are going to get chased down. The Gulams, of course, doing particularly well. Baltoon now needs to look for an age up. I think it's going to be very important if he hasn't already. So it doesn't look like he has at this stage. So prioritizing the age up is going to be really important here. Uh, but we do see Musafati numbers have risen sharply. He's up to 22 Musafati. Definitely the right call. So hopefully Zertan gets the message and says, you know what, maybe I should make some archers and exactly what he starts doing. Three archers in queue now for him. So if I was looking from the Baltoon perspective at how I could have improved the chances of success with that, I don't really know the answer other than adding more battering rams. But even then, you add more battering rams like, the problem is the Manjanik, right? Like, you can't really get into the backside. You can't ever neutralize the Manjanik. And I think that's the problem. Without being able to neutralize the Manjanik, it makes it very difficult to ever push into that position. So, well played by Zertan to be able to hold that. The question now is going to be whether Baltoon can actually... Uh, whether he can uh, transition out of this. Because, uh, realistically, it still feels like he's behind. Sure, the village account might be even. Yeah, he killed uh, quite a few villagers in that fight. Just as we expected that he would. But... He's down an age. We'll switch it over now to income per minute. Get a bit of an idea on where these guys are at. Looks like for Baltoon, he's sitting at about uh, 2k per minute. Compared to Zertan, who's sitting at about 1.3, 1.4k. That's a pretty significant difference right there. 
Uh, and I think that's uh, definitely demonstrated by the, the difference in size of the armies. Now, if you hear any screaming, I will tell you right now that is my son. Uh, he's trying to get into the room where I'm casting. I've locked the door. And uh, let's just put it this way. He knows how to scream. And he, he knows how to knock on the door if you're hearing knocks. That is my son knocking on the door. You'll probably hear him start screaming open very, very soon. He, he wants to get in. So for anybody wondering, because I'm, I'm traveling at the moment. I'm, I'm in the Philippines with my wife and we're, we're visiting my wife's family. But while we're here, we've got ourselves a, a three-bedroom apartment. And um, yeah, un unfortunately, it's, it's not as big as the place that we've got at home. Definitely not as... Whoa! Whoa, there we go. Definitely not as segmented. So it means that... Um, you're not really able to keep him out from the from the hallway or anything like that. So, poor little guy. He wants to come in. He wants to see what Dad's casting. He wants to see all the all the units clashing. I'll, I'll give you a little baby drong update. Actually, uh, we he's uh, he started swimming, like unironically, uh, throw him in the pool, and he, he can swim now. I mean, he's got the little floaties on the arms. They're so cute when they've got the floaties on the arms. But uh, yeah, he knows how to kick his legs and he knows how to do the doggy paddle. That's what we call it in Australia, where you just kind of push your hands up and down, up and down. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud as a father. You know, he's, 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 he's about to turn two years old and he started swimming. And I, I think as an Australian, because we're around water so much, it's probably one of the things that's necessary. But it was definitely one of my big fears was like being around any kind of water and not having my eyes on him. It was just because, you know, well, yeah. Anyway, look, there you go. There, there's your baby Drongo update. Let's check in with how the armies are doing here. Zertan now starting to mass up more and more. He's got a beautiful combination coming through here. The Gulams together with the Archers and of course the Manjanique on the backside. Upgrades are starting to come through as well. So Baltoon on the other side though. We'll be going into Javelin Throwers together with those Musafati. So it's going to be an interesting matchup. Are the Javelins going to be able to kill the uh, the Archers quickly enough? And I fear the answer is probably no. Uh, the Gulams will uh, will hold the line for the for the moment, but Grand Falani Corral coming through right now. So a lot of cows on the backside, not a lot of space though. You can see he's got room for about four cattle ranches. He's he's trying to throw down more military production buildings, and it's just a classic case of no space in the base. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can see he's going to have to eat through this wood line if he wants to get any more cows down. He could, I don't think you could fit there. If you if you could, he probably would. Meanwhile, towards the front, looks like the Pit mine will be going down here. The age up comes through. Expect to see upgrades straight away in the queue. 26 seconds on the Musafati. 25 seconds on the Javelin Thrower. Fortunately, they are unique units, so they, they do... Actually, I was about to, set, to finish that sentence. But then I remembered the Longbow takes 60 seconds, and that's a unique unit. So why does the Longbow upgrade take 60 seconds when these unique upgrades only take 30? Hmm. And they're cheaper as well. Hmm. Explain that one, Atheists. Or should I be asking Reddit? I don't, I don't know who to ask these days. Atheists or Reddit. Walls coming up across the center. Manjanik firing off. Baltoon on the defensive now. It's been holding out this entire game. Put on a lot of pressure. Still got that single hunting canoe behind enemy lines with 10 health left on it. Just being annoying. The one thing I'd love to see from Zertan is just another Manjanik. Just a, a, a second one. I guess the, the problem is if you go for a second one, then you're kind of asking for a Springle. Though, to be honest, even with one, you're kind of asking for a Springle. I would love to see a Siege Workshop get thrown down. I don't think we're going to see it, though. Plus two ranged armor on the way. I'm, give me a second here, fellas. It's been a while since I've been doing casting. My throat's starting to get a little bit... Uh, <clears throat> so I'm going to have a drink right here. I've got my, uh, my Filipino energy drink. You guys know normally I'll drink Red Bull. Uh, but in the Philippines, Red Bull is more expensive than in Australia. So I was like, you know what? When in Rome, you got to drink what the locals drink. I'm not in Rome. I'm in Manila. So uh, instead of drinking wine like the Rome Romans do, do, the, do Ro people from Rome call themselves Romans? I feel like they probably don't, right? Like people from Canberra, which is the capital of Australia, which is where I'm from, we call ourselves Canberrans. Uh, but I feel like people from Rome would not call themselves Romans. <laughs> They'd be like, uh, no, no, we're not, we're not Roman. We're, we're, we're from Rome, but we're not Romans. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm drinking Sting. Sting. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. Uh, it, it I, I pay about 50 cents Australian for each one, which is about 34 cents American for each one of these energy drinks. And look, suffice to say, I got a lot of them. It's very sweet, though. I, I will say that. And that, that's not a bad thing. That's a go oh, he's going for it. He's doing the box. He's pulling out the box. 
I love this strategy. This is such a great strategy, especially if your opponent doesn't go for uh, Springholds. There's no way to kill these Manjaniks. You just can't do it. He's going to continue pushing up slowly and steadily with more walls. The Manjaniks can fire safely from behind the walls. Nothing will be able to get to them. You need to go for the Springholds. Still no Siege Workshop. Have a look at the amount of production he's got back here. A whole bunch of Sofram. There's the Manjaniks getting in some damage onto that mill. No fertilization through just yet. Village is going idle. He's going to have to move up, find something to do with them while they are in the zone. And now that wall gets secured. Walling outside the enemy base. Keep in mind this is a tournament game. Keep in mind this is EGC's Master of Realms. So go check them out this weekend. Uh, of course, I'll shout them out at the end of the video as well. But you want to you want to take a look at that. Have a look at them lighting up. Uh, you, got, you guys probably shouldn't be holding on to those potatoes for too much longer. Damage comes in on the Mansa Quarry. Still on gold. Probably has been for this entire game. He hasn't collected a single a single bit of stone. You know, one of the things that really scares me about the composition that Baltoom's got right now, it is very melee heavy. And have a look at the pathing here. Together with the fact there's so many buildings, this could be really, really difficult to fight into. He's going to look to come across the top here. Uh, I, I would really recommend a Springled right now, Baltoon. Oh. Oh. Okay, all right. A little bit of, a little bit of around the twist. Don't mind if I do. Makes his way up towards that north side. I feel like we're almost playing like a hideout or something. It's like reverse hideout, isn't it? He breaks down the wall. Relic starting to get picked up. This is going to be the first one of the game picked up in favor of Zertan. When it comes to relics, I think there's only four on the map. Either that or my eyesight's still not the best. And now, oh, very smart move here from Baltoon. Uses this attack as a distraction, then doubles back to take out the Palisade Wall. Very, very nice. Opens himself up here, makes sure that he can get through. But the one thing that he's struggling with is still space. Look at the amount of production he's got back here. In fact, there's so much production here. I need to, I need to count this production. Can we get a production count, please, Drongo? F3, F2, F1. F1, there we go. Eight stables, six raxes, six archery rangers, and finally, there it is, a siege workshop. I, I, I was fearful that I'd pressed a button because I saw a bit of purple in there. Mang Manjaniks. Manjaniks. Light them up, baby. They, they didn't light anybody up. They, they barely even lit themselves up. Poor Manjaniks. When they attack units, not very inspiring. When they attack buildings, absolutely awe-inspiring. Those are the two differences. Excuse me. I don't have a mute button here. I wish I did, though. I can mute myself coughing and crying in between my in, in between drinking my sting. A couple more attacks, and now here it goes. The big attack we've been waiting for. A little bit of a wallalo distraction. Village is going to be forced away. Springled coming up. Springled. Look at him. He's trying to find the shortest possible route. Instead of coming up, he's walking his way around. Manjanik's firing off. Nice little shots towards the front line. Javelin's moving up as well. Gulam's holding the front. First of the Manjanik goes down. He's working his magic on that second one. A unable to find it, though. The Musafari, together with the Sofa Warrior, is able to crush that front line. Javelin's still teeing off. We can see him working in on that front. Look at the amount of melee units he's got here. Baltu numbers are, are looking pretty good. He's got plenty of reinforcements on the way. Four Sofa Warriors coming through here. Is Zertan up to the next stage? What's going on with Zertan? He's not up to the next stage. Still staying in the Castle Age. He's going to be forced back away from this. And you can see the consequence of losing this wall. His opponent just simply able to walk through here. Losing out the Manjanik and all the Gulams. I tell you what, those Musafati have been the heroes of the day right now. Even though Zertan got the box up, still wasn't able to pull it out in that fight. Now, with that, Baltoon going to be able to secure up a little bit more resources. You can see he's got 3k on the gold vein. Secure up a little bit more land here and get rid of these walls that have been quite a bit of pain for him in this game so far. Towards the south side, he's got the wall up. Towards the north, he's got the wall up. It's only the middle that's in control of his opponent, or at least once was in control by his opponent. It is no longer the case, though. It's only once those Springlets come out, though, that you're actually able to push. Before those Springlets, you cannot do it. It just it just cannot be done. Those Manjaniks are way too strong. Can you imagine if those Manjaniks were just able to fire that entire that entire fight? It would have been completely different. The Springled allows them, all those units, to get in there. Now up to triple Springled, by the way. Cognizant of the fact his opponent may look to potentially get his own Springleds in. And that's exactly what we see. So Baltoon here making the right call as Zertan puts his first Springled down on the ground. He's got a second one in queue somewhere. We do see it's probably at the Siege Workshop. Indeed it is. Could be looking for... Oh, there you go. A little bit of a keep in the middle as well. To be honest, I'm not a fan of this keep. 
I feel like it should be a little bit further forward, especially when you've got that many vills. How many vills are we talking right here? Hold on. Let me let me get a little bit of a change. There we go. 29 vills. Like, 29 vills is like a keep down here for sure. There's no way he's stopping that. And I guess the problem is with this keep, it, it's very, very far back, and I feel like you're probably not going to get too much value from it. All right. Baltoon now. 120 population compared to Zertan, who's on 117. So despite being 25 minutes through this game, it is still very even when it comes to vill count and military counts. If I had to give a, a, an assessment on positioning, I would say Zertan is slightly ahead just because of that keep in the middle. But the keep on the north side is also a pretty good spot here for Baltoon. So definitely happy with this. I'd love to see a keep on the bottom side as well. There's two gold mains down here. So if you can secure up even just one keep here, it'll put you in a really good spot. Plenty of units out on this western flank. Looks like they will get caught out, though. The Surfer Warriors will go down, unfortunately, for Baltoon. So a little bit of a mistake here. Nice little kiting that still comes through from Zerton. Crossbow's now starting to get mixed in as well. Oh. They they both walked away. But cool guys don't look at explosions times two. Mangonel firing off towards it. Looks like Springles going to get a free Mangonel. Definitely a nice little trade right there. A free Mangonel. Be happy to take one of those. Imagine if I offered you, uh, you know, me walking along the street. Hey, sir, would you like a free mangonel? Sure. There you go. That's your free mangonel right there. Now put it to good use. Zertan hovering around that top side. Military difference starting to really show, though. Have a look at this. In the last couple of uh, last couple of minutes, 143 versus 123 military pop. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. What do we got going on here? Zertan now going to start investing. Oh, Lord. He coming. Zertan now starting to invest in military vessels himself. That could be a big problem. Nice little raid attempt once again coming through. So for Warriors making their way towards that western wall. There's a lot of villagers back there. I say that. Three farms just chilling out. So for Warriors will spot the backlot. So maybe get a little bit of a heads up. Could throw down an outpost or two along the shoreline. Just before that backlot arrives. Will now tempt those enemy units backwards once again. Three relics inside the mosque. Fourth and final relic over here on this east side. No real attention paid towards religion this game. Backler number one does make it to the villagers. He's going to start working his magic. 25 bills over here. We'll check in with him a little bit later and see how he's doing as that bill count will start to dwindle. Baltoon now manages to make his way back through the hole he created about seven minutes earlier. And the villagers... Have a look at this. He's got no idea. There were 20... What were there? 25, 27 bills out here? He's losing them quickly. He's l the Backlaw Raid. I didn't think I'd ever see the day that Sukutra surprised me. But here we are. You know, should I really be surprised by this? Probably not. He can just move to the internal gold, though. He'll be okay for at least at least the next couple of minutes. He's going to up for the wood line instead. Baltoon up on that military camp by quite a while. Quite a while. Quite a way. Springhold's now pushing forward. Remember, if, even if you've got the military advantage, if you've got the Springhold advantage... That is going to paint a different picture for your opponent. There's not really much pushing they can do. If you've got Springles together with Manjanix, that's going to be trouble. There they are, the Sofa Warriors once again. Looking to get that raid off. We'll be able to find a couple villages underneath the town center. Back towards the middle, though. The hold, the hideout continues. The holdout continues. You can see those cattle ranches are starting to come up. Meanwhile, over on that south side of the island, the Backler starts making its rounds. 160 gold left on this gold vein. I don't think it's going to matter. I think he's going to be able to pick it all up before he gets on out of there. Relic still standing strong. Treb's in the middle of the map. I tell you what, how good are Treb's in the middle of the map? I just realized you can basically Treb the entire map from this position here. Throw a keep on the north. Ah, it's getting Treb. Keep on the south. Ah, it's getting Treb. Holding the middle is actually very, very Giga Chad. Backler. On the south. I, I definitely feel like a not, not enough pressure has been provided. Navally. I, 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 I'm just going to stop myself before I say something I regret. Alright. Let's, uh, let's, let's, let's keep moving forward. Alright. Towards that top side. The army is brewing. Have a look at the size of this thing as well. 120 military population right now. Pretty much double what his opponent is running. Zerton, of course, has a lot of siege. Big Mangonel shot could do, could change the tide here. There it comes. 
Only going to hit a couple of scouts on the front line. Springles need to be careful. Wants to bring them up forward. He will get a hole in the wall here. Mango shots come through. Sofa Warriors looking to make it onto the back line. Baltoon going to be looking to finish the game right here, right now. Manganel shots onto the melee units. We can see that he's bringing them through. Springles being forced back. Double Mango firing off once again, getting a beautiful shot in it. Military count still in favor of Baltoon. Together, the Sofa Warriors and the Musafati very strong. Javelin throw a nice little split up here. All of the uh, all of the siege coming in on that backside has fallen away. And speaking of siege falling away, have a look at this. That's I think that's it. Have a look at the military difference. That's almost certainly it. Zerton going to be tapping out very very shortly. I don't think there's any way he's going to be holding this. And after an epic 30 minute game here, don't think I'd ever be describing a game on Sukutra as epic. This was actually a pretty damn good game. I tell you what, was I wrong about this map? Maybe. Maybe I wasn't. Maybe it is the worst decision. There's a little bit of controversy surrounding this map. I will say that much. I don't know. Would you like to see this map in Red Bull Walla Lol? I don't think you've got too much choice. I, I think they're going to put it in no matter what you say. You could start a petition. Actually, I say that, but it was going to be Empire Wars, and it's not. If you scream loud enough, who knows? Maybe they'll hear you. Anyway, the chase continues. Baltoon absolutely dwarfing Zerton at this stage of the game with regard to military population. Able to take out that last trebuchet, and that is going to be it, ladies and gentlemen. Go check him out, EGC TV, this weekend. I'll tell you what, I think my computer's just dying at the last second of this game, but go check him out this weekend. Of course, Saturday and Sunday. I'll leave a link in the description, and of course, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.